If we were to define the Bible in one word, that one word would be love. The very basis of everything within the Bible is love. The love of God for man, the love of man for God, and the love of man for one another. God loves us so that He created everything for us. All things that we need are right here. Man is to love God and worship Him. And our motivation for worshiping and serving God should be the love that we have for God. And then when we look at the motivation that we have for one another, the motivation of brotherly love, we find that all our service to one another, all our benevolence, all of our teaching, should come because of brotherly love. As Brother Joyce so aptly showed us last night in his lesson, in Hebrews the 13th chapter and verse 1, let brotherly love continue. When we look at this idea of brotherly love, we know that we are all, in a sense, brothers. We are all, in a sense, brothers in that God made each and every one of us. We go back to Genesis, the first chapter. We see there that God created everything. And we see how that He created man and woman, man out of the dust of the ground, and woman as His help me from His side. From there, they were given the command to populate the earth. Then again, we find in Genesis the sixth chapter how that God destroyed everything, save eight souls. And out of those eight souls comes forth every living being today. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter if you're from India or Africa. It doesn't matter if you're from South America or Asia or right here in the United States. We are all brethren. In the fact that we were all created by the same God. And we look at this idea of brotherly love. The idea that we should have love one for another. This should be the true motivator in us seeking the lost. In Acts the 17th chapter. Beginning on verse 26, we find there where Paul makes the statement on Mars Hill that made of one blood all nation of men, for to dwell on the face of the earth and have determined a time before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Paul understood the sense of brotherly love. Wherever he was needed to go, he went. Wherever he could find those that needed to hear the gospel, he went. And John wins the ninth chapter, verse 3, he says, For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ, my brethren, my kinsmen according to the faith. Paul saw the need of teaching others. And he passed on this, this need, this desire to teach others to Timothy. And second Timothy, the fourth chapter, we find there where he tells him, Timothy to preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all on suffering and doctrine. Preach the word. Not find a particular group. 
but find anyone that will listen to the gospel. Find those that are lost and preach the word unto them. Friends, we have a world around us that is lost. In 1 John in the 5th chapter, verse 19, and we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. We have a world that is filled with the darkness of sin. We have a world that needs to be reached out to. We have a world that needs to be shown the fact that Jesus Christ came to seek and to save the lost. Luke 19 and verse 10. John 3, verse 16 and 17, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. And 2 Peter 3, and verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Christ does not want anyone to be lost. He wants everyone to be saved. And that does not mean that everyone will be saved. Just because Christ wants everyone saved, what that means is that Christ gave the way of salvation. He gave us the gospel. In Romans 1 and verse 16, we find where the Apostle Paul, in speaking of the gospel, said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to everyone that believeth the Jew first, and also unto the Greek. Although Christ wants everyone to be saved, although God wants everyone to be saved, It takes hearing the gospel of Christ and obedience unto that gospel in order for one to be saved. And we must be busy at going out and teaching the gospel in whatever way that we can. Just recently I was in a discussion with a group of people and we were talking about ways of reaching out to the lost. And we're talking about some of the old ways. And many of us remember how it used to be common to hear preachers on the radio. To turn on our television sets and hear gospel preachers. And these are still very valid ways, although they may not be used as much as they used to be. I know in our area, little short articles in the paper are often run by gospel preachers. And I had one man who was supposed to be a gospel preacher tell, tell me, well, you know, nobody ever reads them things. Nobody ever reads the ads as he worded them. I want to tell him, I read them. I may be the only one that reads uh, half a dozen that's in our weekly paper. But I'm sure there's others that read them. In this same discussion... We're talking about the Internet. And one guy said, well, you know, I bet you there's not ten people in Lauderdale County that will read a website. And it's true. There not, may not be ten people in Lauderdale County that will look at a website. But look at how many people elsewhere, as Brother Sidis pointed out to us, Right now, there are studies going on by preacher's files that I know of. Ongoing studies for people that have either not members of the Lord's church or that have wandered away from the Lord's church. Matter of fact, last night when I got back to the motel room, I was just curious to see what was going on on preacher's files. So I turned over to the forum and 
reading them. And while we are here, the work is still going on. Brother David Hersey been busy at that a little bit too this morning. Putting the lectures going part of the lectureship's already on the website. Ways of reaching the lost that we have not had before that we now have. And out of a love for the lost, we need to be searching out the lost. We need to be finding the ways to reach out to them. We need to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to those that are in great need of it. First Corinthians, the first chapter, and verse 21. For that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. There is only one way of salvation, and that is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all those who do not obey the gospel will be lost eternally. And we have the responsibility of seeing that that does not happen. 1 Peter 4 and verse 17, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. If it first begin at, the, at us, what will the end of them be that obey not the gospel of God? Think about all the loss that we have the opportunity to find. And we can't just sit back and say, okay, here I am, come to me. We must be seeking, we must be searching for, we must be looking for those that are lost. We must have the love to reach out unto them. How many times have we heard of a child that was lost? An older person that wandered away from home. A hunter that become lost in the woods. And the whole community will come out regardless of what the weather is. And begin searching for that one that is lost. Knowing the consequences of what would happen if they stayed lost. Knowing the consequences of what would happen if they were never found in time. We are the shining light to a community filled with a darkness of sin. We have not just one person that's lost. We have millions that are lost. And we as a church need to band together and be actively out there searching to bring them in. We have an older gentleman in the congregation at Center Star where I preach. He used to be an elder. Due to age and health, he can no longer serve in that position. Brother Ezel, though, is a very unique person to talk to. He served as a prisoner of war during World War II. As a kind of a history buff, I love to sit down and talk to him and hear him talk about his experiences during the war. And not only his experiences during the war, but his activities after the war. I'm talking about searching for soldiers that are lost. How that when one is lost, that they will not give up until they found that soldier. Over the last couple of years, as various soldiers in Iraq have been missing, Brother Ezel would take an interest and he would talk to me about how did the army actively look for these people. And that's a lesson for us not to give up. Always, constantly to be looking. 
There are far too many today that are lost that are accepting a perverted gospel. Galatians 1, verses 6 through 9. Paul writes unto the Galatian brethren, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that calls you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach you the gospel unto you, and that which you have preached unto you, let him be a curse. And we said before, so say we now again. If any man preach you the gospel unto you, then that which you have received, let him be a curse. There are too many today that are preaching perverted gospels. Look at all the churches on the corners in our streets today. All the church buildings and meeting places. All the different teaching that's going on by people. And it seems like the perversion of the gospel is what's drawing the biggest crowds at times. And even within our own brotherhood. It's the perversion of the gospel that's drawing the biggest crowds. But we need the truth taught. We need sound gospel preaching taught to those that are lost. We need not to water down the gospel. <coughs> Just a few nights ago, I sat through what was supposed to be a 45-minute sermon. But there was two verses of Scripture used at the start of it for 45 minutes. Two verses of Scripture. That is not gospel preaching. This same man has made the statement in the past that gospel preaching is too hard on people. Most people think that they can't live up to it. That you cannot convert anybody by the preaching of the gospel. But friends, we cannot convert anybody without the preaching of the gospel. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all on suffering and doctrine. Gospel preaching. Gospel teaching. That's what the lost need today. They need to hear the plan of salvation that's put forth through the gospel. In Hebrews 11, chapter and verse 6, Paul writes unto the Hebrew brethren, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In John 8, and verse 24, I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins, but you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. In Mark 16, 15 and 16, he said, I'm going to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. How can they believe without the gospel being taught? They have to hear that which is given unto us in the gospel plan of salvation. That which is given to us in the Great Commission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Preaching is necessary. Gospel preaching is necessary. We cannot water down that which we are teaching unto others. Too many times. What we claim is love that motivates us to water it down. But is it true love to not tell someone the truth? I've used this example before without Mama present. And for her present, I may still go ahead and use this example. It's not unusual for me to be talking to her on the phone or be at her house or something and her to tell me, you need to lose a little weight. 
You need to cut back on your coats. You need to cut back on this. But you know why she does it? Although I may not like hearing her say it, she does it because she loves us. We may not always like hearing the truth. We may not always like hearing that we're a little overweight and we need to lose a little weight. We may not like hearing that we're doing things that is not right. But is it true love when we ignore telling someone what they need to hear? Brotherly love should motivate us to speak out and tell them the truth. If we love them, we would want them to be saved. If we tell them, we would be motivated to get out and search for them and tell them that they're lost, that they're on the wrong road. That they're in danger. If we have true love for our fellow man and we had the cure for cancer in our hands, would we not be shouting it to everybody? I preached at Natural Bridge for four years and out there beside the church building was a good crop of kudzu. Now, those of you who may not know what kudzu is, just come anywhere in the country around this area and you learn quickly. Kudzu will take over anything, even a house, if you're not careful. We had a good crop of kudzu. Now, we used to jokingly stand out there and talk about how that one of these days they're going to find out that kudzu is the cure for cancer. And then everybody in the South is going to be rich. But just think about if you had kudzu and you found out it was the cure for cancer, what would you do with it? Would you take it and hide it and not tell anybody about it? Or would you be going around the neighborhood finding everybody that you knew that was sick with cancer and giving them some of that kudzu and telling them that you take this and you boil it and you drink the water off of it? And your cancer will be healed? But friends, there is a sin worse or a disease worse than cancer. And that disease is sin. And if we have that love that will cause us to go out and tell everybody about the cure for cancer, then we need to have the same love that will motivate us to get out and tell them about the gospel of Christ that cures the disease of sin. We tell them about the gospel of Christ. They hear it. They believe it. We need to encourage them then to repent of their sins. In Luke 13 and verse 3, I tell you, nay, but said to repent, you shall all likewise perish. Acts 17 and verse 30, and a time of this inner God went that, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. We need to teach them that in order to be cured of this, sin, this disease of sin, after repent of your sins, you need to confess Christ, Matthew 10, 33 to 33. Whoso therefore shall confess me before men, him I confess before my Father which is in heaven. But whoso therefore shall deny me before men, him will I deny before my Father which is in heaven. And after we confess Christ before mankind, to remove ourselves of this dreaded disease of sin, we must be baptized. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things which I commanded you. And Lord, with you always, even at the end of the world. Acts 2 and verse 38. When those on the day of Pentecost were pricked in their hearts, they cried out, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What did Peter tell him? Oh, you're all right. 
just pray? No, he was truthful with them. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for mission your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And Romans 6, verses 3 through 5, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death. Therefore we buried with him by baptism in the death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so we also should walk in newness of life. We have been planted together in the likeness of his death, which shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. And first Peter three and verse twenty one, the lot Peter one to even the baptism has also now saved us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the cure for the disease of sin. To hear the word of God, to believe upon that word, to repent of our sins, to confess our faith in Jesus Christ, and to be baptized for the remission of our sins. And if we have brotherly love for those around us, that is exactly what we would be willing to go out and teach them that they are in sin and they need to follow the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then we find that when they do just that, they are added to the Lord's church by God himself. Acts 2 and verse 47. You know, if we have true brotherly love, when we teach someone how to rid themselves of the disease of sin, we don't just stop right there. We continue teaching them. Notice again Matthew 28 and verse 20. After they are taught, after they are baptized, Christ continued on teaching them to observe all things what so commanded you. And though with you always even to the end of the world. We have a responsibility out of love to teach those that are saved in order that they might be exhorted, in order that they might remain faithful. In Revelation 2 and verse 10, For told, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. And may be tried, you shall, not, shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee a crown of life. We must remain faithful. Even those of us as gospel preachers, those of us as elders, those of us that are Bible class teachers and deacons, church leaders of all kinds, have to watch themselves that they remain faithful. They need exhortation. They need edifying. They need encouragement from one another. It's good whenever you have fellow Christians that you can turn to and talk to. That you can learn from. And we need to look for those that need our help. In Hebrews 3, verses 12 through 14, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief, and departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you should be hardened to the deceitful of sin. For it made partakers of Christ, we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Oh, I was so tempted. Even the Apostle Paul said that he had to watch his body every day. That he had to be careful so that he wouldn't sin. Isn't it sad when we hear of someone that was strong that gave in to sin? We all need encouragement. None of us are so strong that we won't give in. in Hebrews 10, verses 24 and 25. The Hebrew writer there tells us, and let us consider one another, provoke into love and the good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, so much the more as you see the day approaching. Provoke into good works, unto good works, and exhorting one another. One reason why I like gatherings like this 
is because this helps us to provoke one another into love and good works. We receive exhortation from hearing others preach the gospel. Receive exhortation from fellowship with fellow Christians. Encouragement that comes by being associated with those of like faith. My little girl was only four years old. But you know, when she sees someone that she knows from church, her face just lights up. She's so proud to see people that she knows. We'd be in town and she'll see somebody across the store, across the restaurant, or just driving down the road. We'd be in Walmart and she'll see somebody and she'll say, Come on, let's go speak to them. Let's go say hi. Wouldn't it be grand if every Christian felt that way about seeing fellow Christians? Instead of whenever you see a fellow Christian, you turn and run the other direction. I know all of us have seen that at one time or another, especially those of us that are preachers. You've seen those that run away from you thinking you didn't see them. We need to covet that relationship that Christians should have. We are brethren. Not only are we brethren in that we are all made by the same God, we are all brethren in that we are all members of the Lord's church, members of the family of God. We should be glad when we see one another. We should encourage one another and uplift one another. But at times, there are those that are members of the Lord's church that have fallen. And if we have true love that motivates us to seek the lost, we would not only seek the lost that are alien sinners, but we would seek the lost that have fallen away from God. Judgment will begin with the house of God. 1 Peter 4 and verse 17. The Bible tells us that better than ever known than to go back. 2 Peter 2, verses 20 through 22. Rather they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. But it's happened to them according to the true proverb, the dog has turned his own vomit again, and a sow is washed through her wallowing in the mire. Hebrews 10, chapter, verses 10, 26 through 29. The Hebrew writer records, For we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment fiery in the nation, which should devour the adversaries, he that defies Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who shall trod underfoot the Son of God, and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified in the holy thing, and had done his fight of the Spirit of grace. Friends, it is a sad thing when a member of the Lord's body falls away. And it's an even sadder thing when they die in that lost condition. But oftentimes we overlook those that have fallen away. You know, we talk about evangelism. We look at evangelism by going out and finding those that never obeyed the gospel. But how many of us look around our own auditoriums and see how many people that aren't there any longer not going anywhere. James 5, verses 19 and 20. Brother, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him. Let him know he that which converteth 
The sinner from the air of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Galatians 6 and verse 1. But if a man be overtaken in fall, ye which are spirits shall restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Consider in thyself, lest thou also be tempted. We have the responsibility of finding those who the pews are empty. We have the responsibility of finding those that are no longer faithful unto God. We should have the love that would go out and search and find them wherever they may be and bring them back in. We can receive forgiveness and be restored. In Acts the 8th chapter and verse 22, Repent therefore this thy wickedness, and pray God that perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. So we not carry that message to every lost child of God today? To repent of the sin that they have and to pray for forgiveness from God.